give up. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. Amen. God would not give up on us. We would never to give up on, on him. He won't give up on us. We won't give up on ourselves. I'm going to take him on some feet. He's another one of my feet. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. Amen. I'm not going to use my mic today. I've got a big mouth. And I know you can hear me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I can talk loud. Uh, greetings and blessings. Hallelujah. To our 10 a.m. worship service yeah, yeah. at True Destiny Ministries. We thank God for you tuning in this morning. I got a phenomenal word today, and I'm just excited about delivering that word today. And it is awesome. I tell you, when God gave me that word, this this word that he told me to teach, yes, uh, not yesterday, uh, three days ago, I was excited because I always, it's a slogan that we always say. We always say. But before we get started, we're going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. This is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice, you're going to, uh, you're going to rejoice, yes, and we yes. all are going to rejoice and be yes. glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, you're allowing us to see another day, another opportunity oh, just Lord. to praise you. Somebody yes. didn't wake up this morning. Yes, oh, God, we just thank you and praise you that we have the opportunity to wake yes, up yes, with the Lord. activity of our limbs to say thank you, Jesus, yes, to honor you for who you are in our life. Yes. Now, God, I, I decrease that you're increasing me. Take this mouth of clay, Lord God, and I speak the words that you would have me to say. I declare and declare in the atmosphere, I silence the enemy from any distraction, anything that he try to do, that you're, they're trying to prevent your word from going forth over the airwaves, airwaves or anywhere that the people can hear your word and receive your word with gladness. I thank you, Lord God, that they shall not be a hearer only, but a doer of yes, your word. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Each and every one of you that's tuning in today. You know, I was, <clears throat> when I was um, looking at something the other day, and, and I noticed that it's a, a, we're living in a fast-paced society. Uh, yeah, we're living in a fast-paced society where some people don't know if they're coming or going. They really don't. They don't know if they're coming or going, but they, but I know it's the faster they're going, it seems like more confusing they are. Yes. Uh, more confusion come in. But as a result, I often hear some people saying they're just trying to live their best life. Mm -hmm. And that's the title of my message today, Living Your Best Life. Living Your Best Life. What I want you to understand is important. You know that you cannot live your best life without Christ. Amen. Uh -huh. It's not heard of. You cannot live without Christ in this earth, on this earth. I know you think you've done good, you're doing good without um, knowing the Lord as your personal Savior, but that too shall end. Uh, that too shall end because we all have to go the same route. Uh -huh. You have to go to, to get to the Father, you must go through Jesus. Oh, no, you can't buy your way in. You cannot put a deposit on it, on your soul, but you must, you must absolutely go through Jesus in order to get to the Father. So we must understand that because right now the life that people are living is living upside down. Mm -hmm. You're living upside upside down to the point that your your uh, uh your 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 things that you're doing you think is good, but they're all they're all upside down. It's not it's not the will of God for your life. So I want you to understand what we're doing and so what we're saying here today. Living your best life is not living on the edge. Some people like to live on the edge and think God will catch them. When they fall off that edge. But it's not the will of God for you to live on the edge. You need to live in Christ so that you won't have to live on the edge and you can do his will. Do his will. He has purpose for us. Yes. And I'm going to show you in the scripture what that purpose is. Living on the edge does not mean living your best life. We're going to start our first uh, focal passage. Is, um, turn to Matthew. The 22nd chapter. And we're going to read verse 34 through 39. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. You got to say amen. amen. Don't say hold on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And those of you that are watching, I want you to go ahead and um, chop the scriptures down and, 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 go, and go back and study the scriptures and see what the preacher is saying. 
today because the, uh, whenever you're hearing someone speak, it's important that you write their scriptures down so you can go back because you should have the Holy Spirit that'll lead and guide you in all truth. See, a lot of things, confusion is going on right in the, in, in the atmosphere and people are getting confused about whatever they're, they're going through. But I encourage each and every one of you to, to write that scripture down and study for yourself. Thank you, God's word. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verse 34 through 39. And I'm going to read the New Living Translation, and it reads as follows. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him again. See, at that point, they were questioning Jesus because Jesus had gave them uh, some commandments and told them what the will of God for their life. But the Sadducees, you know, uh, Sadducees church folk, and they and they, and they, they questioned what Jesus was saying and what he was doing. But look what it says in verse 35. But they had posed him a few questions. And the 35 says, one of them, an expert in religious law. You know, you always get those ones out there and you're doing something and you're trying to live the life of God and questioning, are you, know, you saved? Are you really saved? Are you really doing what God say? Man, listen, nobody got a hell or a heaven to put you in. That's right. That's why it's important that you read and study the scripture for yourself. Now, and so the, the an expert religious, he was religious in um, a religious expert in the law of Moses. They tried to trap him with the question, it says. Uh, verse 36. Teacher, preacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? See, they're talking about the law of Moses because they live their dispensation in the law of Moses. But see, Jesus came to Jesus came to change all that. When Jesus came, he automatically said in one of the scriptures that I did not come to to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. But see, they didn't understand it because they were stuck in their religious ways. So verse 30, uh, verse 36 says, Teacher, which is most the most important commandment in the law of Moses? 37, Jesus replied to them. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first greatest command. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Isn't that something? The entire law are based on the two. Love yourself. You can't love the name if you don't love yourself. A lot of people try to think they, they say, oh, I love you, but you don't love yourself. How you gonna love me and you don't love yourself? Preach it, preach it. You don't even treat yourself right. Preach it. Come on, now you're abusing yourself in all kind of forms and ways, but you're saying that you love me. Oh no, you got to understand you got to love Christ. You got to love yourself first. Christ is telling us, Jesus is saying, love God. That's it. Love That's God. You love God, you're going to love yourself. Okay. Then, you love your neighbor. Yes, treat your neighbor how you want to be treated. Yes. Don't treat them how they treat you, because neighbors can be really nasty. Yes. People can be really nasty towards us, but we have to learn to treat each other the way yes. God will want us to treat. Amen. 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 Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. So listen to this. Deuteronomy 6, 5-9 says, You must love the Lord your God, with all your heart, right? All your soul and all your strength. You and you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today, it says. That's Deuteronomy. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home. Uh -huh. That means we need to always have that conversation in the midst. On the road. Always speaking in the atmosphere. When you're going to bed, declare it before you sleep. Uh -huh. And when you're all warm, waking up, speak it when you wake up. Tie them to your hand and wear them. Tie it to your heart. Wear it like it's a clothing that you put on every day. Loving God. Love said, I'm God, I love you, Lord. I'm going to love my neighbor because in spite of the situation, everything you're going through, you got to speak it into the atmosphere. Sometimes we don't treat ourselves right. I call it self-sabotage. Sometimes we'll self-sabotage our own um, destiny. 
We're trying to, we don't know that we're doing our own unaware, but we're gonna self, self sabotage our own selves. Those of you who are watching, don't self sabotage yourself. Stop, stop taking away what God has given you. Draw near to Him. Draw near to Christ. And watch how He bless you. We must learn to talk, to stay focused. We must learn to take the focus off of us and situation and put them on Jesus. That's what happens. We take the focus off of Jesus and put them on everything we're going through. That's why the enemy brings things that happen our way. We take it off what he said and put it on our situation. So you ask me, how can I live my best life? I'm so glad y'all asked me. <laughs> and I have several ways, uh, several scriptures we're going to go over. Number one, if you're writing them down, I need you to write this down. Come on, we're 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 we're, we're a, a Bible teaching church, and we're like a class, and we're gonna write things down so you can go back and study them. It's gonna help you along the way. Number one, stop making excuses. Uh huh. Stop making excuses, saints. It's okay to say I'm not okay right now, but don't say don't stay stuck in your that I'm not okay. Uh huh. Don't stay, it's okay when you're not okay. And it's okay to say I'm not okay. But you can't stay stuck there. You can't say I'm not okay for the whole month, the, a whole day, a whole week. Get out of that moment of I'm not okay. And I'm going to tell you how to get out of it. Turn Psalms 37. It's okay to say I'm not okay. You know, Jesus understands. However, he don't understand that you stay stuck in it. We can't just, we can't get stuck. We can't stay stuck in our situation and calamity. The enemy's job is to get keep us stuck and we don't get unstuck. Psalms 37. And I'm gonna read, I'm gonna start at verse 4. Come on, lady. Verse 4. Psalms 37 and 4. Yeah, are you stuck in different situations happening in your life? So what? So what? So what people that hurt you? Let it go. L-I-G. I've been saying that for years. L-I-G. I let, if I hold, if I held in my heart all the people if they hurt me, man, I would never have progressed. Because I got hurt plenty of times. From friends, associates, say people that say those say my friends, again, again. people, associates, and you know, and, I, and I, I, it's a learning curve for me. I realized they said they was my friend, but they really was not. Come and they were trying to stay attached to me, mm -hmm. but I had to let them go. I had to say, uh-uh. It's, it's called soul ties. You got to let that thing go. You got to cut it. Yes, yes. You got to cut it because people will attach themselves to you, mm -hmm. to you just because. And then when they attach themselves to you, they bring you down. Mm -hmm. If we don't recognize it, you think they, they, they're going to you, make you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. you're you better than me. Oh, you think it's okay. I don't think I, I know. I don't think I'm better than you, but I know you're trying to hold me back. Yes. Come on now, say it. On the speak inside, it. Speak you're trying it. to hold me back. Yes. And then I know, unawarely, but the spirit on the inside of them is holding me back. Right. It's keeping me from progressing. So I had to do it. Let them go. I had to yes. fire them. Fire those friends. Uh -huh. That don't mean you well. Fire them and let them go. So what you lost, you you lost a a, a, a a friend, a boyfriend, or a yeah. wife, or a husband. Let it go. That's it. That's Sometimes right. you got to let things go and let, let, it, let just put it to the side. Yeah. Don't dwell on it. They're gone. They probably moved on. Yeah. And we yet still stuck on the situation. Preach it, preach it. You got to learn to let it go. Yeah. You got Psalms thirty-seven and four. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Number four says, "Do live and translate." Take the light in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Uh -huh. You got to take the light in him so he can give you the desires of your heart. Yeah, you got to delight in him. Then it says, commit. Say commit. Commit. Everything you do to the Lord, you got to commit. You got to stop making excuses and just commit. Everything you do to the Lord, trust him, and he will help you. Yes, he will. He will make your innocent radiant like the dawn. And the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Verse 7. It says, Be still, say, be still, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people. Oh my God. Don't worry about that co worker. They're trying to get you fired. Know someone that's watching, don't worry about that co-worker that's dogging you out 
and telling lies about you. Don't worry about that former friend that's telling lies about you, trying to scandalize your name, trying to scandalize your business, trying to scandalize your church. My God, my God, my God. Don't you worry about it because the Bible says don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Uh huh. They go real strong about with wicked schemes, trying to bring things against you, trying to get other people, turn other people against you. Don't worry Come about on that. Now. Say Don't worry again. about that. Say all again. you do is gonna reverse on them. Preach it. Verse eight. Stop being angry. Don't be angry about it. Let it go. Say let it go. Let it go. Don't be angry about it. But what it said. Turn from the rage. Do not lose your temper. Don't go off. Don't do the rack of scandal and all that. And if you want to go in and do the nut, nut, go to Nut City. Y'all can call it. You know, that's old school. Don't worry about that. Nut City. It's old school. It only leads to harm, it says. Verse 9. For the wicked will be destroyed. Yeah, they will. They got their day. They got their time. Those that talked about against you and trying to come against you, trying to turn people others against you, knowing you didn't do anything wrong, but just because of their jealous ways, they tried to uh, uh, bring a, 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 a bunch of people to, to, to distract you in your mind. But for the wicked will be destroyed. For those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Oh yeah, to possess the land, you gotta trust them. To possess the whatever God has for you, you got to trust them, saints. You got to trust in the Lord, so let it go. Get unstuck from it. You are now in your best life moment. Once you get unstuck now, you got to get unstuck and be in your best life. Oh my God. Number two, stop taking this, stop, stop taking these personally. Uh, even a lot of people don't know uh, that they're offending you or hurting you. Don't take it personal. Don't be like wood on a dust bag. You, gotta, and some, you know what? A lot of times you can't let people know that they're offended, that they hurt you. You can't let folk know that they get to you because when they do, they kind of start, what they call it, they start poking more. Mm -hmm. Poking a little bit more and more and more because they see they got you. Yeah. Don't let them see it. You know, that's always saying, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Right. Yeah, don't, let them, let them, don't let them see it. Turn to Matthew 5 and 11. So we're going to go on other scriptures. Subscriptions in regards to living you your best life. You still talking about living our best life, saints? My God, my God. Matthew 5 and 11. I'm still reading from the um, New Living Translation. Wait, because when, when you start taking when you start taking things personally, your best life is on hold. It's on hold. Then you become a victim. Don't become nobody victim. You're victorious in Christ. We're not going to become no victim because somebody, because somebody wants you to stay stuck here. No, no, we are stuck here. We don't live. We don't take it personal. Hey, that's what you want. Okay, fine. I mean, I ain't going to take it personal. Okay, that's, that's what you got. Okay, but God said something different. Amen. Yeah. Matthew 5, you got it? Yeah. Verse 11. Listen to this. God blesses you when people mock you. Uh-huh, listen to that. I didn't say that. This is the word. God blesses you when people mock you. And persecute you and lie about you Ooh. and say all sorts of evil things that 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 against that. you because you are his followers. Yeah, they did it to Jesus. We ain't no respected person. We ain't better than him. They're gonna mock us, ridicule us, talk about us, uh -huh. saying we're not saved, saying we're not this, we don't deserve this, we don't deserve that, you don't deserve. Man, who are they? That's because they're gonna lie. The people, they ain't put. Put things in the in the midst to lie on you. But listen to this, it says, be happy about it. Uh -huh. Rejoice. We're not we're gonna have, we're not gonna take that personal because we know the word of the Lord telling us we did it to Jesus. And Jesus telling us, be happy about it. Yeah. Be happy they're talking about you. Hey, listen, at least they, we know they got you on your back, right? Be happy. Be very glad. He said, not just happy, be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. Oh my God, I can shout on them right now. Because they're talking about me, they're trying to scandalize my name, they're trying to say all things, a matter of evil against me, I re I rejoice and be very glad because my reward is in heaven, not on earth. Oh no, it's not here. It's not on earth. And remember it says, the ancient prophets was persecuting the same. Oh my God, listen. That let us know we ain't not we're not alone. The prophets was persecuted the same way, probably worse. Right. You know, probably even worse because they went through too. Because people was talking about them, people was uh, 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 scandalizing them, but they didn't take it personal. Come on now, come you got on to now. keep moving. You got to keep. You got to keep moving in the things of God. Yeah. Don't let people what they say uh, discredit you. 
eliminate distractions, y'all. You got to learn how to eliminate the distractions. Listen to this. Recognize what triggers you to not focus on God. What triggers you not to focus on the things of God? What things, what people, what person or places is triggering you to fall? Think about it. What's triggering you? What's triggering you not to be uh, connected to the Lord? What's, tri- what's causing you a uh, uh, distraction that's causing you not to be uh, 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 closer to God? We must, we must recognize those triggers and start eliminating that. That person. That person stopping you all every time I turn around, every time you turn around, you uh, when you try to read your word or, or spin into the things of God, even going to church. You get a phone call from that person, or a person showing up. Bring them to church with you. <laughs> Give them the word. You'll stop. Because that's the enemy that's trying to bring, to bring distractions to you. And then when you see that place, that phone call, should never supersede what God is saying. Never supersede what God is doing in your life. When you get a phone call and you know it's time when you're supposed to be doing something for God or going to church, always somebody got something going on. Calling you on, on, on Sunday or on Wednesday, whatever your Bible study or church time is. Calling you, got something going on. Oh, I need you. Oh, you're going to need me after church service. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're going to need me after church service because you have to eliminate all the stress because when the enemy see that he can distract you, on that area, he's going to always try to do it. He's going to try to do it again. He'll, he'll come back and back, back and back, back and back. he got to eliminate distractions. Listen to this. If he can't destroy you, he will distract you. Uh, he will. If he can't convince you to give up, he will divert you, your attention. Yeah, let me say that again. If he can't convince you to give up, he will divert your attention. Come on now. If he can't lead you to moral failure, he will keep your focus misaligned. Distracting is one of the most effective tools of the enemy. Stay, stay, stay focused. Stay Stay focused. focused. I always tell folks, stay focused. Because I know the enemy will throw you off focus. He'll He'll distract her. Uh, Peter, first Peter, I'm gonna turn there. You don't have to, you don't want to you write it down and write the scripture. First Peter 5 and 8. First Peter 5. First Peter 5 and 8. Okay? New Living um, Translation says. Stay alert. Say stay alert. Stay Stay alert. alert. Watch out for your great enemy. The devil. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Your great enemy is not the person next door. It's not the person sitting next to you. It's the enemy, the devil, that's trying to distract us. He prowls. He's like a roaring lion. You know what prowlers do? They see. Uh-huh. They're always walking around. Prowlers do that. They're walking around. Looking for someone to devour. You got to stay focused because he's trying to devour you. He's trying to he trying to distract you off of your focus, off of what God is saying. You got to stay alert. Say stay alert. Stay alert. Stay alert. Number four. We're closing up. We're closing up. Self care. My God, that's one. That's very important. So Self care. Take some time out and focus on you and God. It's important that I'm not talking about self-care, just not uh, doing anything. Time Self-care is with you and God. People will pour on you when you know it should be you and God. Uh-huh. It's God's time, saints. It's self-care mode. You know they got something they call plain airplane mode. Put it on air, put your phone on airplane mode, you don't get no calls. That's true. Uh-huh. Yeah. Self-care. Self-care is between you and God. Get in, get in the presence of God. I heard someone say, we were talking about a Wednesday, but someone said that when you spend more time with God, you will get here, you'll hear his voice even more clear. And that's true. You got to spend more time with God in order to hear his voice. Because when you hear his voice is strange, you will not obey. Self-care is very important. When you put yourself, your life on God and, 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 and God's mode, you won't have you won't be able to get entertained by the enemy. The enemy. That's self care. Take some time out with you and God. You should not be always. Listen, I love the Lord. I love just spending 
time on the water, sitting on the water. I can go fishing like every day about if I can. Because I believe that time, even if I'm not fishing, that's time God speaks to me. Because it's something about the water. It's peaceful. Yeah. It's peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. So I if you don't if, if you never did that, try it practice it. Just do some self-care, you and God. And watch how God speaks to you. And I was telling a saint, uh, well, no, a co Sometimes, you know, she was going through some challenges, going through some things, and she was saying how, how um, you know, everything in her home was getting wired, and, and it's like she couldn't put peace, she works two jobs, and, and, and she's going to, that's what I said, she's by the water, that's what I said, it's a time out. Nobody with you. Go to me. Go to her just sit and listen to the voice of Jesus. Keep that inner peace, which is important. And when she did that, she was so thankful. But she was so grateful. She said, it worked. We have to do that. We have to do that. Take some time. That's self-care. I know a lot of people say self-care. No. That's a normal thing. And, 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 you know, that's self-care, but that's the normal thing. I'm talking about self-care with God. Mm-hmm. Spend a time with God. That's what's important. Turn to Mark 6 and 34. Let me show you that in the scripture. Mark 6 and 31. Spending time with God is very important. I got, I got. The Lord. I pray you guys are getting something today. Lord. And those that are watching, I thank you for watching once again. We're still talking about living your best life. This is how you get to living your best life. Then Jesus said, let, let go. I'm sorry. Let's go off by ourselves. A quiet place and rest a while. They had to even do it. They were the disciples. He said, this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and the apostles didn't even have time to do. That's self-care. He said, let us go to ourselves. Let us get in a quiet place. You got to be in a quiet place. Get from around all the hustle and the bustle. You know, being in a fast place. Pace, hey, y'all. People living in a fast place. They want to now they microwave. Yeah. But spend some time with God. Get some a quiet time. Quiet time, get away from the children, the spouse, and, 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 and whoever, the little grandchildren. Get away and just do some self care with God. Let us speak to you about some things about your relationship. Now, honey, may be speaking about the relationship that you're in. He may, be, he may give you some revelation about that relationship, about that spouse, about that, that, um, that, that boyfriend or that girlfriend you're with. He may say, that ain't the one. But in the wrong, but you all hooked up in the middle trying to live that fast life because they give you that good, that good, that good energy. You good. It may not be fun. It may not be fun. So you got to hear God. Hear God. My God. Number five. Final one. Shift. Say shift. Shift. In order to live your best life in God, you must be ready and willing to shift. God will speak to your potential. And shift you to your purpose. Yes, he will. He knows what you're capable of. You may not know it right now, but he knows. That's why when the prophet comes and prophesies you, it don't always mean it's for now. It could be for years to come. He could preach, oh, you a great preacher one day. You look terrible. It reminds me when um, Sarah laughed when, 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 when God told her she was going to bear a child and she was in a World world in her nineties. Sarah laughed. And a lot of people say she laughed in disbelief. And she probably laughed in awe and said, Man, I don't know what you talking about. But you gotta understand, when God speaks to us and the prophet, the word of the Lord comes to you, it don't mean it's gonna happen today or tomorrow. It may mean it's, it's gonna happen. But put it on the shelf and allow it to allow it to uh, uh, marinate to God bring it to pass. But listen, God will speak to your potential and shift you to your purpose. Be prepared to recognize it's him that shifts you to another level. You gotta be prepared, saints. You gotta be prepared that he's shifting you to another level. Sister Christy, God is shifting you to another level. Be prepared. So be prepared. Everything is alright. He's shifting you to another level. Don't be, don't be don't be concerned when you when God revealed another level to you in him. Don't be, don't be, don't be all nervous about it. Just embrace yes. the, level, the level that God is taking you to. Romans 12 and 1 says, And so, dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. 
because of all he has done for you and I. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship God. Oh, that's how we worship God in our, in our lifestyle. And I can't, we talked about that Wednesday. How we worship God in our lifestyle, in our character. Our character should always represent God. Our character should be a lifestyle that God loves and, and, and is happy about. Our character should be a, a way of people will recognize this is God. It is good. They're loving God. They're doing the will of God. That's our character. That's that's how God. Uh, uh, that's how God uh, 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 is pleased with our ways. So I'm here to tell you, saints, the only way to live your best life is to first accept Him as your personal Savior. There's no other way to live without Christ. That's no other way. Those of you who are watching, that's no other way to live without Christ. You must accept Him as your personal Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says, If I accept the Lord, if I accept the Lord in my heart, if I believe the Lord in my heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. But out of the mouth, confession is made. And out of the heart, I believe. You believe. You can't live your best life and you're not, not knowing Christ. It's unheard of. It's unheard of to know that thing that you can live this life. I know we you probably live a, a, a life of your own in your own statues and own ways, but you can't live this life without knowing Christ. And I'm gonna give you the opportunity to get to one. I want you to just bow your hands, those you can stay seated, bow your hands and and, and um, we're gonna intercede and pray for those that are watching. That may be making an important decision today to accept Christ because they feel they're living their best life. They don't know no better. But we're here to encourage them to accept Jesus as their person of sin. Because you need a Savior. So repeat after me Father God, in Jesus' name, forgive me for all of my sins. For I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Come into my heart. And dwell with me. Fill me with your Holy Ghost and with power. I turn from my old ways to the new. I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. Welcome you to. Well, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I tell you, there's no other place like being in the kingdom of God. Listen, if you pray that prayer, I want you to send me inbox us your information, your name, and your address. We will be happy to send you some literature that encourage you, that get you along your way, to help you to uh, to embrace the things of God. But I want to just welcome you to the body of Christ. It's an important. This was an important decision you made. We pray that you live your best life, but not outside of Christ. Both with Christ. Until we speak again, join us on tomorrow morning at the 6 a.m. Monday morning glory prayer and, and study. And we look forward to seeing you and talking to you soon. God bless. Enjoy your Sunday. Take care. Hallelujah.